It's good to see everybody again. It's been two years. Right? Who remembers me from the last time? <laughs> good, my mom remembers me. That's good. <laughs> That'd be bad if she didn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm memorable. <laughs> so, how's everybody doing? Good. Praise God. Are we excited to hear from the Lord today? Amen. Let's pray really quick. Father God, bless this time that we have to be together. Speak through me. Tell us what we need to hear. And help us to apply it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Today I want to talk about a word that I think there's some confusion about in the Bible. And my my inner teacher came out a little bit. I'm less of a preacher, more of a teacher, just like my parents. Once I get stuck on something, I want to know everything I can. <laughs> I promise it won't be boring. <laughs> even though it's only one word. <laughs> but every time we read the Bible, we can get something new. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, today I want to talk about meekness. So, meekness. We hear this word a lot in the Bible. Okay? Now, we th- whenever we hear this word, we think gentle, submissive, quiet, right? Is this, is this kind of what we hear? Is that... Accurate, I'm checking an no. Albanian. I'm making sure uh, it's so right. Everybody shake your head like this. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. We're all on the same page. Right. So, as usual, there are some things in the Bible that are different culturally. But if we ever have a question about something, we need to go back to what the Bible says. Now, what culture says. Amen? Because we can follow culture all over the world. There's different cultures. But the one thing that connects all of us, the one thing that's consistent, is the word of God. So let's look at the scripture really quick. James 1 21. James 1 21. Let's hope my scriptures are right. Last time they got all mixed up. James 1 21. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. So I looked up the original translation of this word. And what, what this word means is a mild disposition or a mild outward attitude. Okay? That's what the original word means. And it doesn't mean it doesn't mean in fear. Receive the word of God in fear. Okay, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Receive in weakness the word of God that saves your soul. Okay, as if we're supposed to be fearful of the word of God or the shame of our weakness. We're not supposed to be ashamed. Okay, here's keep this in mind. We're going to go through a lot of scriptures. Okay, a mild attitude. 
Let's look at another scripture. Hebrews 4.16. Permite de Brin, Cade Jasmudiat. Hebrews 4.16. Cade Jasmudiat. How many of you have your Bibles? Sapra Yusha Kan Biblia Meveta. Raise your hand if you have your Bible. That's right. You don't know what this crazy American guy is telling you. So I'm not going to be lying. You got to love it up in your Bible. You got to love it up in your Bible. You got to love it up in your Bible. You got to love it up in your Bible. You got to love it up in your Bible. You got to love it up in your Bible. All right, Hebrews 4:16. Hebrews chapter just one day. I think this scripture, me doy si tú scream, is saying the same thing as the scripture before. Now I thought that even just the scream you were part. Okay, it says therefore come boldly under the throne of grace. Le da throne de Abraham y busca el trono de Herod. That you can obtain mercy, que te mueve más cerca and find grace to help you in time of need. Que te que te lleve más cerca para te pasar un día no como no voy. Okay, we know the scripture. It's a good scripture. Once you know the scripture, your life's going to change. Okay, but let's take the meaning of these two scriptures. Because we believe the whole Bible. Okay, let's put it together. And it means we can boldly accept from a loving God His word as the only truth that will save us from separation from Him without fear and without condemnation. That's pretty exciting. So are you starting to get a little bit of an understanding of what meekness is? Okay, it's not fear. It's not weakness. Maybe a gentle attitude. Okay, but it's not weak. Okay. Now, probably the most famous place that we know this word Probably the most famous scripture we know this word from. Okay, when did my Zakon show you never any oil to fill? Matthew five five. Matthew five five. Okay, these are the Beatitudes. Directly on the top of the tit. How many of you know the Beatitudes? Who should be on tit? Okay, we got a couple people. Ah, Doctor Reed, Paul. Yeah, say that Dina told you that Doctor. All right, let's read. It says, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth." The word "but" there, no one can sit in the front, so the truth is that the rich have it. No one can say, "Why do I?" So the truth is that the most of them, no one can say, "I'm so much better." So the truth is that the rich have it. How is that possible? See, it's a wonder cure. What's he talking about? For example, flats. So if we take The cultural understanding of this word. How can someone who's meek inherit the earth? It doesn't make any sense. The timid don't inherit the earth. Right, the guy who drives his car up. Past the line to get to the front of the light, he's the one that inherits the earth. Aisha, kagan makin na tuin bus sa maforit per te kaluar ay merton. Right, that guy who passes everybody in traffic. Aisha, personal niya kagan su kish fire na traffic. Drive on the sidewalk. Kagan na tuin te kaluar. That guy's not meek. Aisha, nungas sa merton. Right, he's dominant. Aisha is dominuous. He's assertive. Ahí es de cursar si fort. Right, culture tells us that if you're assertive, en la cultura no todo nos dice fort, you'll inherit the earth. Si do mar es poco, do trasgos poco. But what's the Bible tell us? Porque son nosotros pibes. The meek will inherit the earth. Que es el puto de los trasgos en todo. Amen. Right. Jesus is the one that said this. Pero Jesús sí es la hija de facto. So it must be true. Si se tuviera de verdad. Now I don't know about you, but this was always one of those scriptures. You're reading and you're reading. And you get to that line about meekness. And I used to go, ah, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And then I would just, 
Well, let's just keep going. You just skip over and keep, keep on reading. But one day it bothered me too much. I couldn't, I couldn't just skip over it anymore. I, really, I wanted to know what it meant. So I, this is where this, this whole study came from. So Jesus is telling us, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Well, Jesus saying this, he obviously understood what it meant. Okay? He was an example of meekness. Right? We just had Easter. Right? Remember, we know the story of Easter. Now, Jesus was a, was being arrested. Right? 500 some soldiers came to get him. Okay, now Jesus could have overtaken those soldiers. He had the power to assert his dominance over those people. But he didn't use it. He said he told Peter who cut off the man's ear. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Right? He said, Peter, I have power over these soldiers. But I'm not but people who assert their power, people who assert their power will die by it. That's what he's telling Peter. That you're constantly trying to kick your way. Right? All the disciples were wondering, why isn't Jesus... Getting out of this. He said, I could call down legions of angels if I wanted to. But if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. This is meekness. Jesus was the best example of me. How much persecution did he get in his short ministry? How much persecution do we get since him? Being Christians. We need to show meekness. The way Jesus showed meekness. So, Biblical meekness is exercising God's strength under His control demonstrating power without harshness. That is meekness. So we can see Jesus being an example of that. This gives us a different idea of meekness. When I started to understand this word, every scripture opened up to me. I started looking through the Bible trying to find where they used this word. I said, if I, if I misunderstood it in the Beatitudes, I misunderstood it everywhere. Now I'm going to go see what God promises me. Now that I know what meekness is, where else can I apply it in my life? See, a lot of us have taken this scripture and ignored it. Like I did. For a long time. I just said, ah, I need to finish this chapter. I, I'll just skip over that. I'll come back to it later. Right, or preach on a different beatitude. Right, there's, there's a couple other ones. We'll focus on that. Okay, so some people have that attitude. 
And, and some people take it to the other extreme. And a lot of people use this scripture as an excuse to not do some things in their life. Some people use it as an excuse to not do things for the glory of God. Because they're afraid. Or they're weak. Some people use this scripture to show that weakness is biblical. I had a conversation with an Orthodox priest in Russia. And he was talking about this. Now, in my younger years, I was fiery. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Well, the there was this priest that I would see every day. And he would he was holding a box for donations. And he looked like this. Everywhere, every day. And I would go the same way for home from school every day. And, and finally I looked at him and I said, why do you look so depressed? <laughs> I said, does, does that help you get more donations? And he said, no. Blessed are the meek. And from that day on, I had a misunderstanding of the scripture. Because our God is a strong God. And we believe in faith. Right? We can have faith for things. You resist the devil and he will flee from you. These scriptures don't make sense if we're supposed to be oh, But this guy, this priest, used this scripture to not have anything to not do anything to look weak and depressed because he thought he was being holy that's not what this word means it's not holy to be weak honestly I think it's kind of a doctrine of devils to twist this word to mean something opposite of what Jesus meant. Jesus is telling us be strong in your authority be calm when bad things happen because you know who's behind you. You don't have to lose it. No and be scared and worried and afraid. And try to do things in your own strength and be assertive. Because you know who's on your side. That's what meekness is. Right? Our, we want to yell at people who yell at us. Right? Sometimes God will even give us an assignment. And we say, okay, God. And then we go and just ignore what he says next and just do it, do it, do it. Work, work, work. Just push, push it in, get it done. Right, while God is going, hey, hold on. I have the instructions. Just wait. <laughs> Just wait. Addy loves Legos. Right? Love Lego. Right? I got her Legos for Christmas. And the instructions are really long. <laughs> right? 
They're long. It's like 30 pages. And she didn't want to follow the instructions. She wanted to go, oh, this one's next. Oh, let's put it on. Oh, I know what's coming. It's okay. I'll just put on the next piece. I know what's coming. Right? And then she would get frustrated. Why doesn't it fit? It doesn't look like the picture anymore. <laughs> we do that because we try to assert our will. When we get persecution for being Christian, right? We go... No, that's not true. The Bible says this. No! But what does Jesus say? Meekness. The meek will inherit the earth. We need to understand our authority in, in Jesus. Right? We need we need to be we need to understand our authority so well. That we become dangerous as Christians. Yeah. We need to become dangerous to the people who are against God. When they, when somebody who is against Christianity and against the will of God, when they see us coming, oh, we've got our work cut out for us now. Here comes Emmanuel. This man knows his authority. We're not going to be able to trick him now. We're not going to be able to scare him. We're not going to be able to make him feel weak. We're not going to be able to make him look ridiculous. He's not going to yell and scream and make Christians look bad. I don't know if you're going to be able to giant cage. Because that happens, doesn't it? You ever seen a, a Christian just yelling and screaming? About it? it doesn't. It doesn't look good for Christians. <laughs> Maybe they're right. But the way they did it was wrong. You're not showing meekness when you're yelling at somebody. But we need to be dangerous. So we need to understand the power that's behind us. When you truly understand the power that is behind you in God, nothing's going to scare you. Nothing. You know, since I had kids, I understood the Bible so much more. Everything makes more sense to me. How many of you have kids? Do you know what I'm talking about? Every time the Bible talks about God being like a father. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> right? <laughs> my, when my kids are fighting about something, first of all, this is like their first time they've ever traveled with us preaching. I'm sorry, kids. You're going to be used as an example a lot. <laughs> That's just part of being in a ministry family. <laughs> but I promise, it's going to be good. <laughs> if they're fighting about something, usually over a toy or something, <laughs> like kids do, right? I don't, when I go in to fix the problem, I don't need to yell like they're yelling. Right? One of them yells. One of the kids yell. That's mine. And then the other one yells a little bit louder. No, that's that's mine. Mine. And then it goes and goes. <laughs> Do I need to go in there? No! No. You go, hey, relax. Hey, hey, it's it's okay. I'm going to fix it. <laughs> Relax. Right? Why, why can I do that? 
Better question, why do they stop yelling? Because they know I have the authority to fix it. I don't have to yell to show them my authority. I don't need to lose my patience to show my authority. Right? Because they know. Okay, dad's here, he's in charge. Oh, enemy Bobby, I that's how we need to be with our Heavenly Father. They go, oh, Dad's here. He's going to fix it. Oh, I relax. Amen. I can relax. Right? But we need to show the fruit of the Spirit. It's so when you're Showing the fruit of the Spirit, that means you're living in the kingdom of God. Let's look at uh, Galatians 5.22. The fruit of the Spirit. I'll go ahead and read it, then you can read it. So, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ, Christ Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoked, provoking one another, envying one another. Okay, por fruti frumus, ashto, dashoria, dezimi, pacia, dorimi, mirdashia, mirasia, pesimi, zembrotsia, vet controli. Kunder këtyre gjerave nuk ka liq E pa ta që janë të krishtit E kanë krizuar mishin bashkë me pasionet Me lakmit e ti Në qovë se rojnë në frim Në frim edhe duhet të jetësi Të mësojnë të jemi buravec Letë mos të jemi buravec Duke provokuar dhe duke pasur Smirë me njëri tjetër So there's one word up here A shim fjallë këtu Faithfulness, gentleness Besimi zemërbutësia. Gentleness. Zemërbutësia. This is the same word as meekness in the Beatitudes. It's the same word. Right? So is this the fruit of the Spirit or the fruit of the flesh? It's the fruit of the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Right? So... We need to crucify our flesh, like the Bible says. Okay, we need to live in the Spirit. And walk in the Spirit. So, here's what I'm understanding here. The fruit of the Spirit are not what our body and flesh wants. Our Natural desire, the shiat tona naturore, is to not have meekness. As she never must be in the mirbut. Is to assert our will. For she to vendosim and to vonet in tom to be mitzvah not duam never. You don't need to teach people to want their own way. And to fight to get their own way. It's Part of our natural, it's what we're born with. We have a passion to push our own desires on other people. That means we have a constant work in the spirit to have meekness. It's not something you either have it or you don't have it. You have to work on it all the time. It's a decision to be me. Because it says walk in step with the Spirit. Walking means you're constantly going and doing and walking. So you may have victory over meekness. Yesterday, but today you still need to work on it. 
Du te ponoșe acum am să mă puțin. Maybe you had a good encounter with somebody that treated you poorly. Ba să poate îți aici medicați că o să o șocăiești pe iubă. But that's going to happen again. Porcă nu nu îi presuri. The Bible, like Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble. Biblia thought that Jesus is thought that in the world there will be problems. But he also tells us the meek will inherit the earth. Or did I say not thought that the world will be crushed by the tokens? He said, "Fear not, for I have overcome the world." They thought was he the prince of the one among the token, among the bottom. He's telling us how. I not I go and see to inherit the earth. That trash going token. But also not be stressed out while we're waiting for that to happen. Or did I say too much? The enemy to stress you are to check your chat and to. It's a matter of understanding your authority in God. As you men, you men, you are such a net that you don't have authority in God. You never came in the Bible. The meekness that God shows us, the rebuttia that the Bible has not revealed never, is is the fruit of the Spirit. Is the fruit of power. The fruit of the fruit is the fruit of the Spirit. We think meekness is somebody who can't help themselves. Never mind that she has a sense of morality and yet she doesn't have the money to do that. But the Lord was meek. Or Bertia is a sense of morality. Because Jesus was meek. So say Jesus is a sense of morality. Because he had infinite resources from God. So say I is the fulfillment of a fund man of Bertia. But he chose not to use it. Or I is the only most important. Why? Sin. Because if Jesus had called down legions of angels, so if Saint John said Jesus had those sealed the legion of angels, but the doctor, he wouldn't have gone to the cross. I am not shot in the cross. We wouldn't be saved. Then not the issue to shoot the door. We'd all be going to hell. The shot in the third affair and have no relationship with God. The best of Kishim has seen our life in a paradise. You don't know the plan of God. Tii nu gândi plan în paradise. So don't ruin the plan of God. Și nu să schiat rob plan în paradise by losing it. Even if you are fighting for God, even if you say to him, "You don't have to work for me," if you don't do it with meekness, when you say to him, "Look at me, my son, my boy," you're going to lose people. You don't have to push me as it. That's not what God wants. And if you don't push for me, you don't. We have to have a peaceful knowing. Then do the kemi nyonya nyori to. That we are backed by all authority. And when you know that, you'll be able to have meekness and show meekness. Because God's going to take care of it. We have a job to play. And that is obedience. Anger and yelling and frustrating and pushing. Atarini to pretitura to zanit to stewards and trying to in the flesh. If it's a perpetual minimish, force the will of God. Ta ustroim vuneti ne perdis. That's the opposite of meekness. Kjo është kundër ta e zanëpucis. It doesn't mean you're weak. It means you truly understand what it means to be strong. For the most part, the people who come to the test are the most strong. The most strong is Jesus. That is biblical meekness. The cure is the same with the same people. Amen. 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 It looks like we're running out of time. Let's pray really quick. Let the Lord do it. Dear God, Ati Dasu, from this day forward. We pray for supernatural help. Never do them in Brandim supernatural. To help us to understand. That the Nandimosh and the Kuptoim. The authority that we have in you. Authority that you never came in the two. Help us to be reminded. Nandimosh and never the Rikuptoim. Whose name we carry. See the name or never embark them. Help us to trust you. Nandimosh that the Besoim too. And to show meekness in all the authority that we have. May the authority in Jesus' name. May Amen. Amen. Amen.